thank you again, and we'll move on to the next talk, which will be by King Yi Lu um, on constraining randomization history from quasars uh, in the Subaru survey of uh, low redshift uh, Irish quasars, uh, low luminosity Irish quasars. I'm sorry. Go ahead, please. Yeah, okay. Um, so, uh, hello, everyone. My name is Ting Yi Lu, and I'm a master student at National Tsinghua University. I um, work with Professor Tomo Goto. And today, I'll talk about our constraints on round session history using the um, rush frame UV spectra of the, um, of the shocks, uh, using the rush frame spectra of the shocks quasars. And um, as mentioned by previous speakers, uh, quasars are very powerful part of the randomization. Basically, we can use, um, uh, we can measure the redshift lemma of our uh, absorption in the spectrum. And if you have many quasars, it is, po it is possible for us to um, constrain the um, dispersion of optical depths in some certain redshifts. So it's quite important to have a large sample of quasars. And um, another um, quite common way to measure the randomization with quasar spectra are uh, measuring the H2 bubble size, uh, which is also called the um, near zone size or the proximity zone size. And um, the proximity zone is basically the distance from quasars to where um, the quasar radiation equals the background one. Um, but observationally, we used to measure it um, by measuring the distance from quasars to where the transmission first dropped down to point one. And um, using this way, we can um, have less assumptions. But as shown in this equation here, um, the, size, the size measure used using this definition actually have an additional term, which depends on the um, uh, lemma of optical depths. Um, and also in some recent work, it has been found that the uh, near zone size actually scales with um, quasar lab time uh, at around 5.5 to um, seconds. Uh, anyway, uh, I will show the result of the near zone size of this work later. And um, in, the, in addition to this, we also try to constrain the, um, back, the background photon incident rates using these uh, definitions with the method in these um, calculus papers. Um, basically, we assume a, um, a background um, lemma of four rays of good depth as high redshift, and also some uh, certain flux drop of profile of quasars around its near zones, and we measure it by um, fitting the transmission profiles in near zones um, using different uh, background photo answer rates. And um, the sample in this work is from the Subaru Highly Exploration of Low Luminosity Quasar Projects. Um, basically, because of the um, deeper surface depths of the HSC, we are able to recover uh, vendor quasars in the surface area. So here I show um, the redshift and the UV magnitude of the shocks quasars and other known quasars. And um, the shock quasars are in principle uh, two, two magnitudes uh, fainter than all the brighter one. And also the sample size is around, uh, you can see that the shock population is um, almost half of the known quasar population at redshift uh, above six. So we can try to use this to tighten the constraint on realization. And also we know that um, fender quasars are more common in the universe. So we can use them to prop, uh, probably uh, more common IGM environments around them, around the quasars. And um, the Shox is an ongoing project. So far there's around 93 quasars um, identified by uh, in the 90, 900 degrees square of the sky. And after the quasar selection, we have some special scope follow up and also the near, near infrared follow up and the ALMA ones to determine some uh, black hole properties. Um, but in the work here, we will only use the quasars, we will only use the uh, spectra from the first special scope follow up. And um, these quasars have very low spectral resolution and very low SNR. So we cannot really use these to measure things such as uh, transmission spike or dark pieces. 
And also, most of the prisons in this work, um, the redshift is determined by the lemma of emission lines. So our sample suffers from a uh, quite large um, uncertainty of redshifts. So um, we will try to look at our results only um, statistically. And um, for the continuum of these quasars, we adopt the Paolo continuum uh, plus some emission line Gaussian fitting, like um, the lemma of emission lines and the nitrogen ones for these quasars, um, because this always works better than the PCA on our current data. And uh, um, here I show the mean IGM opacity measured using the Stokes quasars. Um, this panel is just the um, spectral coverage of the Stokes quasars. Each of the horizontal lines here is uh, one quasars. And we try to measure the transmission in these um, gray beans. They are, as reference, uh, longer than lamb beta emission, but shorter than the quasar near zones. And um, the gray dots here are the transmission value in these gray beans. And uh, red dot here is the main, uh, I, main line of sight transmissions in these uh, orange beans. So we can see that um, the transmission dropped to zero as around well shift six, um, which is consistent with others' work. Um, this is around the tail end of pronunciation. And um, also we try to convert it to the upper depths. But as you can see here, um, at higher redshift, we can't really tell whether the output depth is going up or not uh, because of our limited detection limit for the output depths. And um, here I show our quasar near long size measurements. Um, the right shredded region is the median value of the Shulk's quasar's near long size. And we try to fit their evolutions at uh, redshift uh, just evolution here, the red um, red line here, and we found it's uh, steeper than the work done by Ehlers at all, but uh, shallower than the one in previously in earliest work, and um, we think this may be due to the um, transmission spike at slow redshift, and also actually the sky residues in the spectrum. Um, because uh, we also try to fit uh, the evolution using only a quasar with redshift higher than six. And the trend is showing here, the red dotted line. And yeah, it's almost flat. So it shows um, almost, it shows that um, the evolution of near long size, it can probably not tell us um, things about the run sequence history. And also try to compare the near long size with the uh, um, the size in simulation, um, the magenta one and the orange lines here from Davis and Chess work. And we found the uh, median near long size of, of this, the the Shulk's quasars consistent with um, the quasars of lifetime around one to one hundred mega years, at redshift lower than six point five. And the tire redshift, its size is uh, smaller than uh, one mega years. Uh, but we still need to obtain more near, uh, higher quality near infrared spectra to um, confirm this trend. And um, here I show the background photo rates evolutions using the, uh, the method I mentioned previously. And it's probably a bit uh, ambitious to do this. Because, our, because of our data quality and many assumptions made in this method. Um, but I think it's still um, interesting, it's still important to push the constraint of the background photo uncertainty rate to redshift higher than six. Um, because as you can see here, uh, this from these uh, gray lines to black lines, our models um, assume different things such as uh, different um, ionizing photon sky fraction or different realization redshift. And um, also this this bomb is um, due to, this bomb is main, uh, mostly contributes from uh, quasars. And the second one here is mostly comes from uh, radiation of high redshift uh, galaxies. So if we can uh, map the shape of the evolution at high redshift, it is possible for us to roll some model of randomizations. And uh, the, the dots 
uh, the red dots here are the median value of this individual measurement of the shelf process. Um, basically, what, what we can say from here is that um, we cannot really tell uh, which, which model here is correct. But at least we can say that um, the, our, our measurement is consistent with the uh, model using uh, fancy document gas driven randomizations. And um, I will leave my summary slide here. Thank you very much. All right, thank you for a great talk. Um, we'll wait for questions on Slack. If there's one already. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, it says, not sure if the uncertainty is too large here, but can this sample be used to do similar forest opacity fluctuation measurements as Sarah Bossman presented or the dark fraction upper limit that Sophia Campo just showed? Um, not really. Uh, we try to use it to, we try to measure the um, dispersion of optical depths uh, using these samples. Um, I have a slide showing here. Um, but as you can see that, um, uh, we, see, we seem to see some evolution in this um, uh, dispersion of optical depths, but it's actually due to the um, distribution of uh, dissection limits of all spectra, not really due to um, ionization effects. And if you compare to compare it to Boltzmann's work, you can find that um, we cannot really push the um, limit of upper depth to um, higher ones. Great. And uh, Tom Toons asks: Is the data also consistent with a model in which uh, brighter galaxies dominate the emissivity? Um, actually, we we didn't con compare that to those models, so we cannot answer this. Um, but yeah, we will try to answer this on Slack. Any other questions? Well, let me ask a question then. I'll wait for others. Um, did you find any? Very young quasars as the uh, others or at all so sort of small proximity zone size quasars in your sample for the ones that you have good uh, redshift measurements at least. Um, for those, I think it's better to check the work done by its motor sounds. Um, actually, she presented the results last year. Um, she used the near long, uh, she used a uh, only near infrared spectra which have higher. SNR and only uh, and only with redshift determined by other lines, beta lines. And she did find some uh, quasars with very small neuron size. Um, yeah, so there is young quasars in the shock sample, but we can't really tell it from uh, the current uh, data set. Thank you. And just to be clear, all of these near zone sizes are assumed to be spherical or near zones, or, uh, or do you account for any potential variation due to um, you know, the, the fact that the quasars might ionize one direction versus another? Um, I think um, this, mm, because it is just observational one, so, um, we don't really try to uh, check the uh, potential things. Mm 